the book of John, the 21st chapter. John chapter 21 in your Schofield Reference Bible, page 1145. We'll begin with the 15th verse, and we'll read it all together in unison, verses 15, 16, and 17. John 21 Verses 15 through 17, reading the verses in unison. Let's stand together to do so. And we'll begin together, please, there with the 15th verse. Ready? So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. And let's pray. Father, we come to this hour, knowing that in times past you've blessed in ways that we cannot even measure. Once again, today, at this hour, we need Thee. And may we, of course, be attentive to Thy Word. If we hear not, then we cannot receive that which You have for us. We cannot be blessed. We cannot have that which would fuel us for the week and the days to follow. So God, give us attentiveness to the preaching and bless with power our hearing and the preaching in Jesus' name. Amen. For weeks I've been what I could call almost besieged by people asking the same question. And it's been sort of spooky. I wonder maybe if people haven't been discussing it in groups or something. And the question that's been asked to me more in the last four or five weeks than it's been asked to me in the last five years is this. Brother Hiles, how do you get tears? How do you get tears? I'm not talking this morning about hypocritical tears. Manufactured tears. You see, there are two kinds of hypocrisy. There's the hypocrisy of appearing to be something you're not, and there's the hypocrisy of being something you don't appear to be. Hypocrisy is when the exterior and the interior are not equal. You may be a hypocrite by appearing to be something you're not. You may be a hypocrite by being something you're not appearing to be. I'm talking this morning about people who come to me who are sincere people who feel they ought to weep because they feel strong emotion, they feel love, they feel loyalty, they hurt when others hurt, but the tears don't come. And this is not a big revolutionary thought this morning. I'm going to leave with you a little secret, just a tiny one that I think is important, and I've told probably probably 25 people this little talk, at least a portion of it, in the last four or five weeks. How do you get tears? Our Heavenly Father, I pray this morning this should be a heart-softening time, a time of learning to show what we feel once we feel it. I pray this morning you'd bless our gathering together, and may this hour be what we need, and may it also teach us to give others what they need. Amen. 
Of course, you'll want to listen carefully. Somebody said, Brother Howells, I feel it. I really do. One of the finest men in this church said this last week to me. And I believed him. He said, Brother Howells, I work on a bus route. I love those bus people. And I try to help them, and God knows he does. But he said, for some reason or other, the tears never come. Why? Somebody said, I love people. I have compassion. And for their sake, I want to show it. Now, I feel that they need to know how I feel. But they don't know it. Because I feel it on the inside. But they have no way of knowing it because they don't see it on the outside. Brother Howes, I want to give people I love tears to show them that I love them. And I want, to, I want to say this before I go any further. Whoever told you that wooden nickel that it's uh, feminine to cry and masculine not to cry is a weakling. That's the silliest thing I ever heard of in my life. That's, a, that, that this, that's, that's some uh, weakling thought up that, thought that up, thought up that, thought up that up. And uh, proofread that and give me to me after the service, Ms. Colson. Somebody said, in recent days, my loved one is affectionate. But I, I'm not the kind to show affection. And I want my loved one to know that I love and how I feel. But I somehow can't reveal it. And it's causing some strained relationship because I cannot express or do not express the way I feel. Somebody said, I love the Lord, but I don't get excited about it. I, I feel excited, and I love Him. But what can I do to bring the tears? Okay, here it is. Follow me carefully. It's simple. It's almost too simple to even present to you this morning. And yet it's profound enough where it could transform your life if you let it. Jesus was reaching out. Something awful sad about that to me. That my Lord had to reach out for anybody to love Him. That's so sad to me. He who was love is reaching out trying to get somebody to say, I love you. Jesus comes to Peter. And if anybody should say it, Peter, was he not the first one listed of the twelve? Always. Was he not a part of the inner circle? Was he not the leader of the, of the apostles? Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? And every, every preacher that knows the Bible, and most lay people know what he said. There's a play on words here. It says, there are two words for love. Well, there are more than two, but two used here for love in the, in the Greek. One is the word agape, which means deep love, a sincere, abiding love. And the other is phileo, which means fondness. Now listen carefully to this little play on words. There's one little part probably you never heard. Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? You know, isn't that sad that, isn't it sad that anybody that loves anybody, it has to be asked, do you love me? Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Use the word agape. And Peter answered back, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He used the word phileo, which is fond. Jesus said, Peter, do you deeply love me? Peter said, Lord, you know I'm fond of you. Jesus said, Peter, do you deeply love me? And Peter said, Lord, thou knowest I'm fond of you. And then Jesus changed his word the third time to the word phileo. He had to take his expression and raise it, or lower it as you were, to Peter's expression. And Jesus said, Peter, do you deeply love me? Peter said, I know I'm fond of you. Again, he said, Peter, but do you deeply love me? And Peter said, Lord, I know I'm fond of you. And Jesus said, Peter, are you fond of me? Something awful said about that. Oh, listen. I wish I could give Jesus the love he deserves. This robe of weakness, this veil of flesh, this glass darkly, makes it totally impossible for me to even compare minutely with His expressions of love to me as I express my love to Him. 
I can hardly read that verse without weeping. The Savior said, I need somebody to tell me they love me. I need somebody to say I love you. I need to be loved. Peter, do you love me? Deity. Ask to humanity. Reaching out to humanity and begging for an expression of love. Perfection. Reaching out to imperfection and pleading for an expression of love. God. Reaching out to man and pleading for an expression of love. Let me tell you what Peter's trouble was, and it's your trouble too. Peter wouldn't say it. Peter wouldn't say it. If you want to weep, if you, by the way, I, I, we're assuming, I'm not talking to folks now that have no feeling. I'm not talking to folks now that want to, want to put tears on as a facade or a front, uh, uh, or a veneer. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if this morning you deeply love and you feel it. But somehow the tears don't come. I won't tell you how they don't come. Number one, simple as ABC. Say how you feel. Just say it. Just come out and say it. Just, say what you do. Just get on your, better still. Go outside. Are you listening? Go outside, look up to the sky. And just say, Jesus, I love you. You're a wonderful Savior. You're all in all. Now, you can think that without crying, but you say it. If you feel it and say it, it'll make the tears come. I, uh, I rarely ever pray under my breath. Under your breath praying don't, does not make the emotion come. Every once in a while, somebody said, but I almost cried. Had to fight back the tears. Don't you fight back the tears. Somebody needs to see those tears. Somebody needs to know how you feel. And the only way they can know how you feel is what they hear and what they see. So I go outside, look up. And I may say, Jesus, I love you. And I may stop and I may sing, My Jesus, I love you. I know thou art mine. For thee all the folly of sin I resign. And I may just say, Jesus, you're a wonderful Savior. And I appreciate so much all you've done for me. That's the way the tears come. When the words come, the tears come. Say it! Say it! But you are not the saying type. Say it anyhow! But you say, I, I'm not the affectionate type. Then get that way! You feel it? Show it. Again, I say, I'm not talking about showing something you don't feel. I, uh, I go to my mother's grave nearly every week. Nine weeks out of ten at least, I go to the uh, mausoleum out there, to her crib, and I talk. I don't just think, I talk. I feel like my mother deserves some tears from her son because she's gone. I feel like my mother in heaven deserves to see her son weep because he misses her. And so I go out to the, the crib, the cemetery. And I take out this little picture right here, which is my favorite picture that my mother in the last years of her life. And I stand beside the crypt there and I look at this picture. And I say, I love you, Mother. And I'm grateful for every wrinkle. I'm grateful for every furrow in your brow that you had. I'm grateful for every step that you took when you didn't feel like taking it. And I'm grateful for every time you work to put some food on the table. I say it out loud. When you say, I just say it. In the first place, if, if you just say it under your breath, the emotion won't come. And God needs those. This old dry, hard, wicked, pasty, heathen Christianity needs some emotion and some tears. Say it. Say it. <laughs> it awkward me. Then be awkward while you say it. But he says, it's hard for me to express myself. And I wouldn't want you to do anything hard. Now you listen to me. There's many... Hear me. You dirty, sorry, crooked thing, you. 
There are many mothers whose faces are furrowed and brows are furrowed and faces are wrinkled and shoulders are drooped and they slobber while they talk and they don't smell very good and they're up in years and nobody ever says, I love you. I want to say that sin. If you love her and don't say it, it's hypocrisy. And there are many old dads across this world too who are tired and weary. They're not very pretty anymore. Their head's bald and their stomach is big and they don't have the personality and their breath doesn't smell like it used to smell and sometimes the body functions don't work really well and they have a little odor in their body. But they're human beings and somebody needs to love them and they need somebody to love them. And I stood beside my mother's bed when she was on her way off going. A few days later she went. We thought she was going one night. And I said, Mother, I love you. And she said, I love you too, son. And I said, Mother, they say you won't be here but an hour or two more probably. But I said, uh, Mother, you, you, you've been a wonderful mother. And my mother said these words. She said, say, say that again. She said, I just love to hear that. A lot of people love to hear it. And when she said that, I wanted to leave the bed and rush out in the hallway and run down the hallway and get on the elevator and get down the main floor and run out the lobby and out through the lobby of the parking lot and get in my car. And I wanted to go to every rest home in America and walk in every room where some poor old saint of God, a poor old person facing the grim reaper is going out to eternity and never one time hears anybody say, I love you. You, you say, I'm not that type. Then get on your knees and get right with God and become that type. Then the tears will come. Anybody that knows me knows that when I leave the office every, every Monday morning, Anybody that watched me carefully, and I doubt maybe nobody knows this. But I expect a few people have noticed that uh, when I leave the office every Monday, I walk in the waiting room for a minute. Always do. And close the door partially and look at a picture of John Rice. It's a ritual for me. I read those words to my buddy. To Jack Hiles, my buddy, I think it says, John R. Rice. And I relive those 22 years that we shared pulpits across this nation. Practically every state in the Union, we shared pulpits together in them. And out loud, I say, Dr. Rice, I love you, beloved friend. And I miss you. And the tears are easy to come. What you say, Brother Halsa, I was reared in Canada. I don't care if you're reared in Lower Slobovia. I don't care where you're reared. It's wicked not to say I love you. It's wicked not to talk about it. And you still see that big old high school football player came to my office one day. I said, what is it, son? He said, I just want to tell you something. I said, what do you want to tell me, son? He said, I just want to tell you something. I said, what is it? Well, I just want to tell you something. Well, I said, say it. Tell me. What is it? Well, I just want to tell you something. I said, well, what do you want to tell me? The big old birdie fellow looked down on me and said, I just want to tell you I loved you. That's all. And took around and ran as fast as he could down the hallway. By the way, he was crying while he ran. You want to cry? Talk about your love. Talk about your feelings. Look up to heaven and say, Jesus, I love you. Tell it. Talk about it. Say what you feel. You know one reason why I get more excited when I preach than you get when I preach? Because I do the talking when I preach. We may feel the same thing, and I may have tears, and you may not. You know why? I'm doing the talking. But does the talking is a person that I, I, I love notes. But that's all you do. That's not enough. You can't hide your obligation to say I love you behind a note. Here's the Son of God, Jesus. Look, angels obeyed His command. The winds and the waves obeyed His commands. Seraphim and cherubim obeyed what He said to do. 
Here's the one who is love. Do you love me? I need somebody to tell me you, you love me. Do you love me? Hey, hey Lord, I'm fond of you. It's cliches. I hate cliches. You know what I hate? I hate. Have a good one. I hate that with a passion. Have a, that means have a nice day today. Have a good one. <laughs> have a good one. Oh, shut up. You don't mean that. Why don't you look them square in the eye and say, I hope today is a wonderful day for you. Or, God bless. Let me have your red skeleton. God bless. I won't do it. That, that, is, that is a facade. Why don't you look at them and say to them, May God bless you today. And may God's presence be yours today. Why don't you say, I hope today will be a wonderful day and Jesus will be very close to you today. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that type. Um, I know. You're not the truth telling type either, but you're supposed to tell the truth. Everybody here, if they were the type of, would all cuss. Fellow said, boy, I'm glad everybody's not alike. Everybody's alike. Everybody's like me. Everybody wants my wife. He, the other fellow said, if everybody's like me, nobody wants your wife. We all, we're not all alike. I'm simply saying the honest truth is that there needs to be a softening. Tell it. Express it. Now, to those of you that have gone a little farther and you have expressed it in your love. Your tears have, grown, have, 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 have subsided some. If you want to have tears, and you say it, and you express it, but maybe you've gotten a little cold, the tears don't come as they want. Okay, then do this. Say it in a different way. Say it in a different way. Change your words. Use new words. Use new expressions. Do it in a way that's not you. You say, yeah, I get so tired. Be yourself. Just be. Everybody comes to college. Be yourself. Don't try to be a Lee Robertson. You could do worse. Don't try to be. Sorry. We say, well, I'm going to be me. And if I was me, I'd have killed every deacon in this church years ago. And if they were themselves, they'd have killed me before I killed them. Of course, I'm kidding. I would only have killed, killed half of them, plus the bass section of the choir. Enter in. Look, do you know when you feel emotional? When you enter into an unfamiliar area of life. You enter into an unfamiliar vocabulary. You choose words you've not used before. You choose means of expression you've not chosen before. And those new areas, you will not feel as comfortable and they will not be cliches. Jesus wanted to hear it. Well, he doesn't need to hear it. He's God. That's why He made us, because He needed to hear it. He needed to hear it. And he said, I, I need some loving. I need somebody to say, I love you. I need some loving today. I'm deity. I'm the Son of God. I'm the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Now, well, I get it. I expect that one of the apostles, maybe. Now, which apostle? I know. The boss man, Peter. Peter, do you love me? Can't you see the heart of God reaching his hands out saying, Peter, do you love me? You know, one reason why people say, you know, you know. Nobody listens. People say, so and so did this, you know, you know, you know. They're reaching out. Yesterday afternoon, I probably shouldn't tell this, but it's so sweet to me. Yesterday afternoon, 4.30, we had a lovely wedding here. Two of our fine young people. And uh, I just had the awful time. Awful time. You know, it's just not really good at a wedding to stop and go <laughs> just not real good 
but my nose is dripping on both sides. Tears run down my cheeks. That stuff is drowning me. My throat. And the bride got to do the same thing. She was holding him with one hand, holding her bouquet in the other, and then with the third hand, she was wiping her nose. We just had an awful time. Sweet, lovely time. Let me tell you how it all came about. Friday night, I was driving home. And I got to reliving the days when I was pastor of a little church with a hundred people. I thought about Mr. Blummer, his funeral the next morning, and I said, Dear God, I do want to be, I do want to be what they need me to be tomorrow morning. And I got to thinking about the old days when they had about one death every six months or one, one death, one person in the hospital every few months even. Back in the days when hundred people in the church didn't have as many folks as we have in the choir here in the front row. So didn't have near as many adults as we have in the choir here in the whole church. So if somebody is near death, I'd go to the hospital and sit beside them. Stay there until they died. Spend the night at the hospital. Be there when they died. Had some kids get married. Had about one wedding a year. I spent three or four, had three or four appointments with the kids. and Spent hour upon hour counseling, getting ready for marriage. Good night with this great monster we have here and, and all the things we've got going on. I wouldn't trade it for the old days, but I just got to thinking. But I, I just, uh, I got to thinking. I wish my people could have what you people, my people used to have. And then the Lord seemed to say to me, which people do you love the most? The ones you have now or the ones you used to have and you had a hundred people? I said, Lord, no comparison. The ones I have now, many, many times more. And he seemed to say to me, which would you rather they have? The young Jack Hiles who had the time or the mature Jack Hiles who knows how to love? And I was thinking about that Monday, uh, uh, Friday night. And I was saying, I hope, I hope that Tim Garner, Kathy Coombs know how much I love them. I hope the families know. See, you understand this. I spent, I, I, I made a, preached a funeral yesterday morning. I spent four hours just deciding what to speak about and trying to make it appropriate. Four hours of my life just for the funeral, getting ready for the funeral service yesterday morning. But I said, oh, you always have a way of words. All those words come out one every ten minutes. Last night I had my preacher boys meeting. I spent hours preparing the preacher boys meeting last night. And I spent a couple, three hours trying to get my heart in tune. But anyway... Yesterday afternoon, I, I already was sort of full. I was standing right up there with the groom, Tim Garner, fine young man. And we were, we were talking, cutting up. I said, I, I said something like, you know, hope that dream I had last night didn't come to pass. What is it? And I said, oh, nothing. I just dreamed you fainted during the ceremony. That's all. But I said, most of the time, nothing to it. And, uh, we, we laughed a bit. We were standing there watching the candles being, uh, the, the ushers lighting the candles and, and the sun singing and so forth, and the parents being seated. And all of a sudden, this is his wedding day. And Tim said to me, he said, you know, all of this is because of you, don't you? I said, what do you mean? He said, you know, don't you, Brother House, that all of this we're standing right back there in the hall. All this because of you. I said, what? He said, well, we wouldn't have met if it hadn't been for you. You won Kathy's mother to Jesus. And we wouldn't have the church if it weren't for you. Or the school. We went to the Hammond Baptist School. We wouldn't have had all that if it weren't for you. Man, he is just ruining the good wedding right there. And then he looked over and he said, you know what? You're a pretty good guy. Well, he never was so accurate in his life. But he said, you're a pretty good guy. We had a little revival meeting before we ever came in. And I said to him, I'm proud of you too, pal. 
I'm proud of you. Say it. Folks need to hear it. They need to hear it. I don't care who they are. And then this thought. Give them what they want. Give them what they want. If they're, if they're hitting for it, give it to them. Well, nobody loves and appreciates me. You, you want to say, you're right, buddy. You're right. What, what would be wrong with you saying, I do? That's what they're asking for. Well, nobody understands me. I do. They're groping. You say, they shouldn't do it. Until Jesus said, he did to Peter. He's begging, reaching out. Many a hard businessman doesn't admit it, but he's groping. Hey, I wonder how many of our Hiles Anderson College young ladies and young men, we've been out at meetings and I, I have a question and answer time, and they say, for the Hiles, we're going home for Christmas holidays. What? Get, tell us some things we ought to do. I said, young lady, walk up and tell your dad what a great guy he is. You love him. Oh, Brother Hiles, Understand, my dad's a businessman. <laughs> He's never told me he loved me. I've never told him I loved him. We, we, we love each other, and, but, we, but we just, we're not that type. But he wouldn't like it. And I say, you want to bet? You want to bet he wouldn't like it? They don't make the businessman too hard, but couldn't be offended by an I love you. And the girls come back, and they'll write me a note. Dear Brother Hiles, it wasn't easy. I did what you said. I went home and asked my dad if I could take him out to McDonald's to eat. Uh, you know, that's a hamburger place. place that make hamburgers and french fries and so forth. And uh, and we went out to eat, and we're sitting there eating a Big Mac. And Brother House, I said, to Daddy, I never have said this before, but at Howells Anderson College, they, <laughs> they teach us to do it. <laughs> I love you, Daddy. I love you. And Brother Hiles, he began to cry. He told me he loved me too. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings by buried that grace can restore, touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, cords that were broken, and vibrate once more. Say it, Peter. Say it. Say it! He wants to hear it. Say it, Peter! Tell him! Peter, don't use that phileo again anymore. Get the agape out and dust it off and use it. Say it, Peter! Say it! Jesus needs to hear it. He needs to hear it from you, too. Now, today, He needs you to come alone sometime today and look up to heaven and say, Jesus, You're a wonderful Savior, and I love You. Jesus, You know this, don't You? We wouldn't have any of this if it weren't for You. We wouldn't have met. We wouldn't have the church. We wouldn't have the school. We wouldn't have any of this if it weren't for you. I love you, Jesus. Say it. The tears come. Thank God for them. It's been a long time since I thought about this illustration, but I use it closing, and you've heard me use it. Not new. She said over here, on my right, service, gritted her teeth and grimaced all the time I was preaching, told a friend she'd never come back here again, but she did, and grimaced and gritted her teeth and made faces while I was preaching, told her friend, I don't like him, I'll never go back there again, but she did, grimaced and made faces, hated me, told her friend, I, I hate that man, 
But she came back. And she kept coming to hate me. I got that taste. You love to hate three times a day. Till twice on Sunday. And one day she had enough. I'd made her mad for the last time. And she said to her friend, I am going over there and I'm getting in that line. It was on a Sunday night. I'm getting in that line and I am going to tell him what I think about him. By all the things he says and he hollers and screams and preaches against a bunch of stuff there's nothing wrong with, I'm going to tell him. She came over and got in line. I looked, I knew, I knew her. I looked down and saw her in line. Got the gun out, loaded it. She waited in line. She was down, oh, maybe 10 or 10, 12 folks down from the door. And that night, a family came by, college family, to tell me goodbye. They'd been here for several years. Had little children. They came by and the little children gave me a Reese peanut butter cup. And they hugged me and kissed me and told me goodbye. And mom and dad said, Brother House, we love you. And as they left, I had to close the door and compose myself, get my composure back after they left. One of my young folks came by that night having some trouble. And broke my heart and as the young person left. I was weeping. And I closed the door and waited a minute. Finally, after a while, that lady came to tell me off. And I said, may I help you, ma'am? And she said, well, I came to tell you off. But she said, I, I can't do that. She said, I've wondered why I keep coming. I don't like you. I don't like you preaching. I don't like you cutting up. I don't like what you preach against. But every time it's Sunday morning, 10.45, Sunday night at 7, my, something pulls me there. She said, didn't know what it was till I got in line a while ago. But she said, I saw you when you said goodbye. And I saw you when the young person left. I don't know what it was, but I saw you. And she said, all of a sudden, it snapped. I know why I come. She said, it's that moist spot that's always in the corner of your eye. It's always there. I never heard you preach, but what it wasn't there sometimes. And she said, never saw you, but it's that, it's that moist spot you keep in the corner of your eye. She said, that's, I just realized tonight, that's why I keep coming. This old hungry world needs a generation of believers who have moist spots in the corner of their eyes. A generation of believers are not afraid to say it, not afraid to change it, add new words to express it, and even say it if they're begging for it. That's what the Savior was doing. Peter, you love me? You love me, Peter? <laughs> Lord, yeah, I like you a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? <laughs> I like you. You like me, Peter. I like you. He said something about like that before. He said, Whom say men that I am? Somebody said, Well, some say Elijah, some say Isaiah, some say one of the prophets. Jesus said, But tell us, Whom say ye that I am? You think he didn't know who they thought he was? You think he was trying to take a poll? You think he's trying to figure out what they thought? He knew what they thought. Well, why did he ask them? He wanted to hear it. He wanted to hear it. Our Heavenly Father.